Hi, my name is Warren. I've been working on product for Spring. I've been at Ripple a little over three years. You probably, some of you probably recognize me. I, I helped out a lot with like some of the validator operations, some of the universities. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, I've also been up for about 48 hours, so if things come a lot jittery, it's usually either the coffee or lack of sleep or both. Um, I'm also kind of delaying because I'm trying to wait for two guests of honor that are rolling out of their dorm room beds uh, right about now and heading over here. Um, so last night we held a hackathon and it was, you know, Wednesday night, uh, middle of the week, and we saw 150 people show up. And people came from all over the country. We had students from CMU. We had remote people from Australia, from Sweden, um, Iceland. So it was really interesting and very global. Uh, but there in the crowd, we actually had, you know, roughly about 100, 150 people. And people were uh, tuning in and, and using some, a lot of the, uh, the tools and services that we kind of demonstrated today. And I want to tell you just a little story because this thing, the whole thing comes like real full, full circle. So part of this Ubri, you know, con, uh, initiative is, you know, about students ultimately, right? And so last summer, we actually had an intern who is, it was a rising uh, uh, Berkeley fresh, uh, sophomore. And he comes in kind of like last minute and we're like, oh, can you program? He's like, yeah, I can, I can do stuff. Like, okay, like can you, like, how, how well can you program? He's like, oh, I've been doing it since I was, like, five. And I'm like, of course, of course. So we actually put him to work uh, on, on a project, and he finished it in, like, like three days. And we're like, okay, we, we need to give this guy more work. What should he do? We're like, all right, let's put him on a really big project and hope he just, like, tackles it. And so he actually contributed to some of the core libraries that you saw demonstrated today. As a freshman, like that is like the coolest thing. I was at MIT a few weeks ago, and people were talk talking about us about uh, uh, internships. It was uh, at the career fair, and people were asking, you know, how can like interns, be, you know, what do they work on and stuff? And and I was like, well, how about core libraries? Like, you know, these are like libraries that you know potentially you know millions of dollars are are, are uh, being being uh, sent through, and they their eyes just popped open. So I love this story, and I'm hoping that this person, these people show up, because I definitely want uh, to celebrate them. But basically, last night we saw lots of demonstrations of the applications of the core technologies, uh, streaming payments with content. Uh, we saw some interesting applications with like dice, uh, where you just roll a dice, and every time the dice like flips over on a new currency, that currency gets converted to another currency. So lots of really interesting applications that you know three years ago weren't even possible. Two year two years ago weren't even possible. But all these technologies are helping to enable that. And you know, the group here today is like helping to encourage that through research, and then you know that's being applied into the students that that we're working with at these hackathons. So uh, I don't see him. Liam, can you uh, text as you used to start running? <laughs> anyway, um, so this particular individual or individuals, um, they so so Ayush basically showed up uh, at the hackathon, and I kind of smiled and I said, "I think you're about to hack this hackathon, aren't you?" Like it's kind of an unfair advantage when you wrote some of the libraries that you're going to be using in the hackathon. So he kind of smirked and he had a plan. He showed up with a, a big team, the blockchain at Berkeley, uh, a lot of the blockchain at Berkeley team. And yeah, they just did an amazing job. Their team camaraderie the whole throughout the whole kind of uh, uh, demonstration was always, you know, they're full of energy. I was also like getting on stage and kind of tapping into people every now and then. And you could, you could tell that they're getting busy because their tables were getting messier and messier and messier. They had like the second most messy table with crumbs and, and sodas and, and everything all over the place. But basically, you know, um, I'm not sure if you should be able to show up because we are actually running ahead of schedule, which never happens. Um, yeah, so uh, so basically, Ayush was uh, able to build an application that they called ILPMO, right? Uh, and because they did it because they hate Venmo. And Venmo is actually a, a popular application, but they wanted to make it better. So they created a Venmo application on top of Interledger. And they used 
all the core technologies that you just saw today, like literally every single one, that was like their, their, their goal is to use as many as they could. I wanted to congratulate uh, Ayush and the team. Uh, their, their team name was Bad Reputation because they're actually working on a reputation token um, at, here at Berkeley as a, as a consensus research. So again, like fully closing the loop on that. And that's actually, you know, part of the, the Ubri uh, research. So big congratulations. Hi everyone, thanks for accommodating us after the, uh, I guess, schedule is uh, pushed earlier. Amazing that we're running early. So uh, yeah, glad to be here. So my name's Ayush. I'm a second year engineering student here. I'm here with Eric, uh, who's a senior. And we were at the hackathon last night building something on ILP. So I'm stalling so that the computer can connect and I can do a big reveal. Do you have to send this machine out to the video display out? No, it should just do it. I like that. Cool. Oh, it's connected. But yeah, connected. there you go. Okay, right. hey, go back a slide here. So we built ILP SPSP transfer, which is a simple payment transfer solution built on Interledger's SPSP protocol. So I can I already introduced myself. Uh, both of us are part of Blockchain at Berkeley, which is a university-based blockchain ecosystem here on campus. We do a lot of things from open source education to consulting for Fortune 500s. Cool, so why did we build this? As college students, we like convenient and easy payment solutions. When we go to dinner, we want to split the bill instantly, so we use Venmo. The issue with Venmo is that we give up our privacy uh, in order for our transactions to be turned into social media. The concept is a little bit weird, but we all are okay with Venmo profiting from this because of the service that they give us. These are the way that decentralized services provide. So how do we decentralize it? We use Interledger. And how do we keep the convenience? We use QR codes. Uh, this is just a slide about data privacy. So how can we simplify real money exchange? <laughs> we use QR codes. And this is an example of the application that we built, where if you are the money receiver, you can open up a receiving channel by creating a QR code. And what exactly does this QR code store? It stores a URL that you can pass in information. So if you're familiar with, I guess, web development, you can see that there are query parameters here um, for the URL. So similar to how you would pass a JSON object or, um, I guess, activate a payment using Stripe or any other, um, even the Ripple API, you can do the similar thing using this URL. And the added benefit is that it's ephemeral and it basically goes away after you complete the transaction. So this is a program flow of how it works. The money receiver will send a request with a ledger code and the amount of money they want to send or uh, receive, and a QR code is generated. The money sender will scan the QR code, which exchanges those um, credentials similar to how JSON does it over HTTP, and the money will be sent using uh, ILP's simple setup payment protocol. So. To demo this, we built some backend infrastructure. We have two hosted connectors on DigitalOcean, which is a cloud, soft, like cloud hosting software. Uh, simply named connector one and connector two. And each connector will have multiple accounts that um, like function as users for our application. Should we demo it? Uh, yeah. So, right, why don't we run through the last couple slides quickly? Sure. So yeah, just some to give credit to the developers. Um, this is, yeah, as I explained before. The implication of this is that we built a bootstrapped application on Interledger on the application layer. So this demo proves that Interledger does allow us to do what payments for payments what the internet did for information. Uh, because we built this agnostic to any protocol or blockchain or, or currency system, we were allowed to just use Interledger's packet architecture to exchange information without caring about what type of money we're using. And yeah, we can just skip to this. We made a really quick script to make, it's fine, actually. Let's just do the demo. <laughs> All right. Let's get this going. All right. Cool. OK. So I'm going to.
All right, cool. So here's my iPhone. Um, here's the computer. And what I've done here is I've created a, an account with an ID called MacBook, uh, Ledger Code XRP, and I preloaded it with a balance of 500 XRP. And so what, if I want to receive money, I'm going to go here, type in, who wants to name a number between zero and 500? 20. 20, okay, all right. So I want to send 20 uh, XRP uh, from my phone, uh, phone's wallet, to uh, the, uh, the Interledger user with the ID MacBook. So the Ledger ID I'm going to use is connector one, and I'm going to generate a QR code. So here on my iPhone, as you can see, my ID is iPhone, ledger code XRP, balance 500. So with really any, um, any device that supports QR code scanning, whether this be a iPhone, iPad, et cetera, hello, um, <laughs> what you can do is simply scan it. You don't even need to download an application. This is completely web-based. And uh, if this will load, okay. Um, hold on one second. <laughs> oh yeah, Cal Visitor blocks the packets we actually use. So <laughs> uh, this is actually a problem during the hackathon. A lot of the teams were unable to get their. Okay, looks like the demo is not going to work because I can't connect to. We're good. Oh, oh, Air Bears 2. Awesome. So let's try that again. There we go. Um, okay. So MacBook amount 2, ledger code connector 1. I'm going to pay them. And now this is at 480. And if I go over here, 520. Super simple QR code. And should we ask for questions or should we just wait? <laughs> so, yeah, if there's any questions, we can answer some. To build it, uh, we were crunching till the last minute. I think there's some kinks to building on the interledger that are being smoothed out by events like this. So um, the learning curve was the hardest part, I think. Cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, the settlement engine, I don't believe, connects to uh, any fiat currency yet. But the whole idea of you know having events like these is to get people to create those kinds of connections um, on the settlement layer. So you know, as long as there's somebody that writes that software, anybody can use it. it uh, so yeah, it, it's really about the existence of the software, which now that there's open protocols that were just published, you know, should be relatively easy to make. So the, yeah, so the way that um, sort of ILP works in the back end is uh, essentially you're sending payments through routers or through the other like intermediaries that settle you know every once in a while, very similar to payment channels. Um, and so if, for example, you uh, connect to a very widely used connector and uh, then when you're paying them, you know what they would do is they would ultimately pay the receiver. But in between, nobody would really know who's actually sending the money and who's receiving it. It would just look like, you know, pairs of uh, people on the interledger are paying each other. So who's actually ultimately the end receiver would, would not be exposed. Awesome. Thank you for having us. Yeah.